We're going to start this section by looking at post-war expressionism in Europe. And before we get into these ideas of post-war expressionism, we kind of have to explore what is expressionism, what is post-war, why Europe? And that's what I hope to do here. Now, European painters are going to focus on the human figure in the period after World War II. And what they're dealing with is this sort of philosophical idea of existentialism. What does it mean to exist? And there's a reason for that. They're doing it because, of course, they exist in a world which is ruined. Europe was the battlefield for that theater of World War II. And so major cities are in ruins, and these artists are grappling with a lot of different things, ideas that we wouldn't grapple with in good times. They're playing with the ideas of the meaning of the figure, with ideas of isolation, with the individual experience of the world. It's actually going to give birth to the ideas of postmodernism later on, but they're doing this because they look around and they don't see anything good. After all, this is Berlin, 1946. And Berlin, of course, isn't the only city that's going to be destroyed. Most of the German cities are. Much of Eastern Europe is. Large swaths of Western Europe are going to be destroyed. We still have the results of the Blitz in London. We have the results of all sorts of battles that have taken place in places that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And that all needs to be cleaned up. And even if you can get past the physical cleanup, there's the mental side of it as well. After all, as an artist, you're kind of doing something that isn't 100% necessary for people's survival. So you start to question why you exist in the first place. After all, you should be out there helping clean up. You should be out there growing food or doing something more productive. And so you have these arguments back and forth, not only in the mind of the artist, but the mind of everyone. Why do I exist if this is the world in which I have to exist? And so we see artists reacting to that. Uh, famously, of course, Picasso with his unfinished unfinished charnel house. Uh, we will see the same thing with Lucian Freud. And here we see... Uh, girl with white dog and what they're looking at are these ideas of isolation of chaos in this case it is not physical chaos that we had during the war it is the mental chaos people not really feeling like they're part of society because of course what's the last thing that comes back during a war that's or after the war, it's going to be those social organizations, the civic organizations, they're not the first to come back. They're trying to rebuild just like everyone else. And what do you rebuild first? Your own home, your own life. And then you'd go out and try and find employment, which is probably helping you rebuild something else. But you're not getting to that point of socialization. And so we see other artists such as Francis Bacon, who is dealing with a lot of these deep seated issues. Now, in Francis Bacon's case, he's dealing with many others as well. But all of them boil down to this idea of why do we exist? What is the purpose? Is it solely to destroy each other? Is it solely to rebuild? Because looking around you in 1946 in Europe, you might think that rebuilding could easily take an entire lifetime. Now, we know it won't as we look back, but hindsight is 2020. At the time, they would have had no idea. And so they're dealing with all of this mental conflict, all of these philosophical ideas, and they're trying to do so in a very different realm than the American artist. Remember, the U.S. is isolated. So the European artists will pursue this post-war expressionism, whereas the Americans will go in a wholly different direction, which we will deal with later.